Hey, Rob. How are you? Oh, I don't hear you. Some reason. You're muted. I, I was on mute. Now can yeah. you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Are you good for hour one or hour two, whichever works? I was ready for hour one, but can't me do too. just hour two. So. No, no, that's good. That works fine. Unless uh, I okay. don't think she has other plans. So let's just go with it because it's, yeah. Um, okay. I thought I thought so too, but I, I think there was some confusion. So hi, chat room, by the way. Hit that like. You, that's uh, Rob Glenn. You hear tapping in the background. Oh, um, sorry. That's good. Don't worry about it at all. Hold on. I'll mute you from my end until we get started. I'll, I'll set you up and everything. Okay, cool. hit the like everybody <clears throat> we're getting started in just a minute or so so much to cover including i think i feel like the big biden boom yeah that boom boom yeah i understand boom bada boom big big bada boom big Bada big boom. Bada Biden. Big yeah. boom. Yeah, boom. big bada boom. Bada boom. <laughs> big bada. boom. Big bada boom. <laughs> All right, we're going to get going in about 30 seconds or so. Rob, I'll do an intro and then uh, and then I'll bring you in in a second. Let's see. Okay. Three, two, one, and there's me. Hi, look at that. Fantastic. Uh, welcome to the morning show, everybody. It's uh, Friday I once again. Our dear friend Rob Glenn is going to be joining us to help us uh, wander through the future that is coming like a like a like a freight train at us. Uh, and apparently, we're picnicking on the tracks uh, at this point. We'll we'll discuss. I I'm not scared. I don't think Rob is either. I think a lot of people are though. And I I I think there's a lot of Fear to be quelled and explanation that's valuable and a conversation that need be had. And then, of course, we've got to talk about in the second hour, we will talk about big Biden boom. Uh, the the this uh, I, I feel like the second hour should just be called in a poetic sense, the sorrow of Maria Bartiromo. You know what I mean? Like it's a book that needs to be written in the original uh, Italian with a Russian accent uh, because my God, this the. The turd polishing that is going on over at Fox News, I, I, or I guess it's, I guess it's the opposite of turd polishing. It's like literally trying to take a gold bar, form it into the shape of fake dog do, and spray paint it brown. This is apparently the gig at Fox. But we will, 
discuss that in one moment. And then, hi, chat room. Welcome to the show. And uh, But uh, with no further ado, let me welcome back to the show Rob Glenn. How are you, Rob? Good to see you. Good. How are you? I'm spectacular. I, if you'll notice, I, I, I put your uh, logo in the thing. I fixed it this week. So you're not... <laughs> So that people don't think you're computer generated. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I am. You don't know. That's that's true. At this point, it's anybody's guess. Uh, that there's so much um, going on worldwide, and I and I think one of the things that is curious to me is I look at sort of the tech news, and I'm sure you do the exact same thing. And, and chat room, um, uh, throw your questions to Andrea. I think she'll try and grab some if she can for for rob because i know where i'll go with it and he we can tend to get into like a, a circular we already know cul-de-sac of you know it, of discussing this and it's really hard to be aware when you dive into this rob right of what other people's misapprehensions or fears might be because you're so into it right yeah yeah you develop like a shorthand for things you and i have one because yeah. of our shared knowledge yeah uh but yeah it's I'm of I'm of the belief, and I have been for a long time, that jargon kills. Um, yeah. That a lot of times, uh, especially if you jump to it right away. And and for those of you who don't know, uh, Rob Glenn is the uh, is he has a company called Root Design, and they um, I'm pronouncing it correctly, right? It is meant to be Root Design yeah. instead of like the Japanese Rute, um, which is entirely possible um, <laughs> in this day and age. Um, he's in Chicago. Um, I'm from Chicago. I love Chicago. And he's uh, Rob, in many ways, is my fellow nerd buddy about this kind of stuff because he's the only person I can turn to who knows what I'm talking about <laughs> when I go up on these rants about stuff. And um, and I and and so much of it, you know, we're we're both kind of, you know, he's also the 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 patron saint of tech for the show as well because I was introduced to the world of PCs. Uh, you know, like Moses being floated down a river in a basket, um, coming up on a waterfall. Um, when it when it came to switching my show over to the software that's available, only really being at home on the PC, maybe that'll change eventually. But it's definitely a nice skate uphill. So I had to go pick his brain because it's the PC world is a very weird world. And I would say that, and this will kind of hopefully this will start us off. It boils down to UI for me, the user interface. Sure. And uh, and we talked about last time how AI in many ways is just an, an advanced, it should be just advanced interface. AI as opposed, it's not artificial intelligence. It's just a next step in interfacing with your computer, right? Yeah, absolutely. And first, is my audio in sync? My camera feels like it's a little behind. No, it's good. Yeah, no. Okay. It's good, good on our okay, end. So if you... I'll give an example of what you're saying. So on a Mac yeah. and a PC, I use both. Uh, we had to get you over to PC for this show because the GPU support on PC is just dramatically better. At right, you rate, can, it's swappable. Uh, you can you can you can like jump in there and start, you know, messing around with it yeah. more. Whereas the, the the Mac is like hermetically sealed essentially, and that was part of its yeah. benefit. That's why it. It, it's so off the rack for most people that right. you can't screw with it. Yeah. A closed garden. Yeah, and, and that's yeah. very helpful for them because then they don't have to worry about anything else from the outside. At any rate, uh, if you wanted to just go, I don't know, save a file, mm -hmm. uh, and you sometimes <laughs> complain about that, I wish I could just save the file. Like, why can't I just save the file? Right. Um, on a Mac and a PC, they... There's different ways to do that. Yeah. And with an LLM, you can just say save the file and it doesn't care because it knows. Right. The That's steps. a large language it would know model. The steps to do it. Right. A large language model is the is the root of the AI that we're all familiar with right now. And the reason they call it a large language model is as opposed to a small language model, I guess an SLM, which would be basically a chat bot or autofill. You give it a very narrow set of parameters. It's got a very it's got one copy of the dictionary. And that's it. It doesn't have the iterations of how those words go together necessarily, right? That's what autofill would essentially be. Is it like you're trying to spell this word? It looks like this bunch of words. We'll narrow it down, and that's it. That's that would be the you know. I don't think they call them small language models, but that's essentially what we're talking about. Whereas a large language model is just 
scraping from language all over the place and it's many iterations and then it autofills based on habitual ideas or grammatical normals n- normalcy in whatever you're asking it to behave like right yeah, so yeah so the first the example that you gave is a little bit more linear so if i want to like write something that uh mm-hmm. auto corrects yes. i have to sort of say if if it looks like this then it's this if it looks like that then it's this um mm-hmm. and it's much more of a linear approach you have to sort of understand the possible beginnings and all the right. possible ends yeah and it you know it gets more complicated than that but what llms really did was it just sort of really expanded the ability for it to autocorrect <laughs> yeah llm is effectively like a really amazing autocorrect autofill right? yeah it's what, a, it, what's it's... the next thing that you want to say mm-hmm. and it's literally doing that for every single word it's saying mm-hmm. You asked me this sentence, or you, you 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 entered this sentence, and now it's like this really complex set of words, mm-hmm. and it go it sort of very quickly can understand. Uh, it's highly likely that you're thinking this thing, and right. now I will respond to you in the most likely response to what you just input to me. Right. And, um, uh, and maybe that, that that's where it gets really hard because it to understand because it's like this massive matrix. Right. And, um, and it's, they call it a seed. So the path it takes through all the choices is unique uh, in that moment. And so it's not giving you all possible answers and choosing one. It's like sort of traversing the yeah, it's got to narrow it. It's, yeah, it's got to narrow it down. The first thing it'll do is on habitual response. So the first, yeah, that's like why you got a lot of the this <laughs> after and this like right. It and literally you, and, chooses every single word. Yeah, and if fly. and if there were three or four words beforehand, it will go after these four words. Most often, this is the next word, and exactly. and it just kind of fills in that way. That's why it's really good at ripping off fiction. Because uh, the the amount of habitually written fiction and the overuse of certain allegories and that kind of stuff that have become normalized in fiction writing forever, if it just absorbs it all, it it, it can even you know narrowly going like the uh, the AI that they were doing of um, of George Carlin, for example. Which, by the way, that company just settled with his estate to stop it and pay yeah, the that. money that they got, which is good. But essentially, you could take all the Stephen King novels put them in a specific LLM and say, okay, uh, maybe you throw in whatever his influences were. You go, okay, here's what Stephen King said in interviews about what he read about his style. And you throw that in there as well. And then what you do is you tell it, write me a Stephen King novel based on the concept of, uh, you know, uh, ants or whatever, like like insects, an insect-based story. Rap, and there it goes. And then... It will take his influences, what he said about his influences, to give it some a little bit of guidance, and what he's written before, and basically just cobble together the the, the statistical probability every single millisecond of what those words are. Yeah, it's, and that, it's basically pattern recognition. Yes, exactly, on a massive scale, which right. is essentially what the folders on your desktop are. They are, how do we get humans to understand clumps of code? Right, it, it's, uh, they call them skewomorphs. So why that's is... amazing. I love that. Wait, that's a new word for me, and I I love when I hear a new word. Skewomorphs, okay. which a by the way, skewomorph is. Go ahead. It just sounds like a, a like a, a it sounds like a porn version of aliens. Actually, this is like... <laughs> it's way more simple than that. So good. It yeah. it's like an email has a envelope. Yeah. So you take something you know, which is snail mail everybody mm-hmm. knows what snail mail is and you apply it to something that's new mm-hmm. so email has got all kinds of of uh synonyms or mm-hmm. me, um, uh, uh, all yeah. kinds of symbols, it's like allegorical imaging based on something else exactly. yeah allegorical imaging like you take something everybody understands and you go it's like that and you go okay yeah. cool it's like that well then and now all i need to know is how it's different from that in how I handle it. Obviously, I don't lick the envelopes. What do I do? You just click send. Okay, that's the that's the difference. But everywhere right. else, you're writing it, you're responding, you're telling the person what they think. The only difference is it doesn't come in, you don't need to print it out or 
run out and worry about running out of uh, you know ink in your pen and your quill, what have you, and yeah. then it will go. So, so humans, yeah. humans need those things because right, or we'd we never to adapt to new technology. Exactly. So, and that's where for email it's fine because you're sending messages back and forth. Mm -hmm. An email is no different than a text. It's just shown to you in a different way. Right. Uh, comes through a different media. Uh, and so for something simple like that, it's it's really good shorthand for us to say, oh yeah, it's just like sending a letter in the mail. Right. When it comes to AI, that's it gets dangerous because mm -hmm. simplifying it to certain levels makes you then, you know, that's where you very quickly come to taking our jobs, robots, those sort of things. Right. So, yeah. so the, in this case, you don't want to simplify it quite that far. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes you do. I mean, it just depends. Right. So, the, and that would get us to where, uh, like, it used to be that the Alan Turing's of the world and his crew, the way they would run a computer and program it to do something. We have this input and we want to find out what the output would be. So they basically, like, it was almost set up like a uh, plumbing and the information is water and you want the water to come in here and come out through the filtration system. You want to remove certain, you know, chemicals from it or add some. And to do that, you have to run it through certain pipes. And so they would literally walk over and flip switches and go, okay, we put the data in and it only goes through these calculators. It will go through the, you know, the multiplier, not the, you know, this one adds it to the number. This one multiplies it. This one divides it. And you had to physically fucking turn that shit on and off to get it to do that then it's like an imitation game yeah it's exactly that i mean that's look a at the really good uh visual that's exactly the machine that's how it used to work and yet you, you needed effectively a phd to understand the the building of it not necessarily the use i think you can pretty much like an analog synth you can figure out the routing on it um fairly easy if you care most people just don't care enough to dedicate themselves for the six hours. They go, okay, if that goes there, that goes there. Okay, all right, I got that part. And I'll remember that, right? And I don't need notes anymore. That's the other part. Um, and so they, it, it, running it is, but building it so that it only goes that direction and creating the amount of fucking like directional things for the computations using electricity and transistors to direct the energy is fucking nuts. But... They did it. And then they were like, we need something simpler. We need to be able to interact with this thing in a way that we're not physically flipping switches so that everybody that needs to use it isn't fl physically flipping the switches. And if everybody could have just a smaller version of this thing, we could, you could maybe tell another hardwired computer to send a specific thing, but only in this case. And then you have circuit boards and circuit boards effectively did that like only send an impulse to this direction and only send an impulse to this direction based on a one or a zero right and that's that's where you get the one the binary code writers of the you know of the early days of it and then okay shorthand code which would be c and c plus and and you know all the original right which is this word means a lot of ones and zeros packaged together right um run i understand well run that would be the uh, the, the, what was it? The squishy, squishy morph? What is it? <laughs> the skewer morph. That, skewer morph. That's, a, that's more of an analogy, though. Right, but you know what I'm talking about. Like, yeah, but yeah. but but it is a you know it's a it's not a physical looking thing. That would be the morph part of it, whatever. But it, as an idea, you go. I want this program to run. It's clearly not going anywhere. Right. Any more than your refrigerator so when or your you notes. type in run it in the background. It's doing a whole bunch of stuff that you don't need to do. It just and it's right. really just shorthand. You don't need to That's right. type all the stuff you need to do that. Yeah. And it's, it's uh, I, I'm saying the word wrong, but it's kind of like uh, Maslow's pyramid. Is that Maslow? Is that, yeah. I okay. I'm saying his name wrong. So right. the base is your basic stuff like uh, food, water. Uh, yeah, the hierarchy uh, of needs. Shelter. And then right. as you go up, those things are already taken care of. Yeah. So the next level and next level, is, that's basically computing. So. Yeah, and, and we have gotten to, and I think this is where I, I don't really, um, um, and uh, I've got to, I'll get, Luis has a question, I'll get to that in just one second, but I think we're getting to the point where <clears throat> this is just another version of that simplifying so you can get on with it. Because there was a lot yeah. of, 
think of like the physical action, right, of flipping switches. Just you got to stand up, walk over the machine, flip some switches. And so that takes some of the calories you ate during the day and all kinds of stuff. Even the same thing with like sitting and typing. That physical activity, that energy takes a lot of jolt cola, right, to get the thing to do. Now we're getting to the point where the effort part is taken care of and you can just talk to it. You get, we're getting there right. very quickly. Um, so let's say you uh, wanted to code a website. Yeah. And uh, previous to like uh, Wix or uh, Shopify, yeah. which has a user interface, which is visual, you would mm -hmm. have to type all the code out. This is AI. Or use Dreamweaver like, next level like I did. That. There you go, Dreamweaver. That that's like uh, taking the code and making it more like Adobe Illustrator interface. Right. Uh, uh, so now AI is essentially instead of well, I need to go learn how to write it, mm -hmm. and then the next level was I need to go how no, I need to go and learn how to use Dreamweaver. Yeah. Or use Wix or whatever. Now you just say what you want, and it fills in all the gaps right there so what that does is it takes away the time that you just spent learning how to do the stuff to do it and you just get the result which means you can try more results uh as your you're, you're a curator effectively. Mm -hmm. yeah as opposed so, to an, it's one executing the, the work um i i so i have uh i have a movie reference i want to share with you that i i like i can't oh. believe i've forgotten about um, back in this, which is so like considering what's going on right now, it's kind of fucking amazing that this movie was even made when it was made. Um, I'll get to his, I'm, I'm fairly certain you, you might know of it, but haven't seen it or whatever, which is fine. But Luis in our chat room says, what are the odds of two different AIs working together? I mean, sure. Yeah. AI has an interface, mm -hmm. chat GTV, you type stuff in. So people actually do that a lot. They use chat TP, chat GPT to create right. prompts for mid journey. Yeah. And so, yeah, you're the, you're the connector between, but that doesn't mean they can't, uh, like you still have to do something to have it do like mm -hmm. AI well, is not out there just doing it is right. my point. Like, right. It's not well, you could doing also, stuff. You have as long as you write at yeah, as long as you write a handshake programmer essentially between the two of them or set them up, they will respond to each other, but they won't really be working together. It doesn't right. it's not the same thing. It's more like a ping pong match of its of their own understanding versus doing stuff. But the integration concept is way higher. And that's closer to I think the artificial general intelligence idea, which is still relatively mythological in this regard. Yeah? Yeah. So yeah. Um, let me uh, show you this real quick. This is, um, I'll put this in here, and then I have to, this, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, this is a movie, hold on, I have to put your, I, I didn't put your little, uh, your little. Uh, uh, while you're looking for that, yeah. Andrea, Andrea just said Dreamweaver and Wix. So Wix is, uh, if you want to make a website, you hear people say, go to Shopify, go to Wix. It's a website and right. you get an account and you use its interface online to create a website and then you can make your own website. Right. Uh, Dreamweaver is a piece of software uh, mm -hmm. that Adobe makes or you, you, it still makes it, I think. Yeah. And Dreamweaver is a um, like Illustrator, a Photoshop, anything, and you use it to make websites. Yeah. So, um, and, and most of these, again, were just another way of people who, you know, when, when you had people who didn't want to do the actual HTML code, the weaklings that they were back in the early <laughs> days when I was creating Marianne Williamson's website for her. Um, and I had to actually code in that. And then we got, a, like, I couldn't afford Dreamweaver at the time. It was a pro program. And, and then, you know, they ended up getting it because she was rich. And I was like, ooh. Um, but it's just, it, again, it's another way to get the, the work part of it out of the way. Imagine, you know, and this is why right. I'm big on solar and electric cars being a good mix versus 
oil and gas and combustion engines because I don't care who the fuck you are. If you have an oil rig in your backyard, you still the chances of you being able to refine it into a gasoline that will work in your engine on your own is ridiculous. Like the the steps between that and driving a car are fucking enormous. Whereas interestingly enough, a solar panel with a converter and a battery system in your car, it's like two steps. You plug sure. your car in, it draw, the sun comes up during the day, it's drawing energy, and it will charge it from that. Um, it eliminates a lot of those steps between you and just driving the car. If that's okay. Yeah. So this is, let me shrink this down a little bit so I can, it'll fit in. So I watched this I'm movie. Curious what movie this is. Oh, yeah. I, I Okay, well, first of all, let's see if you've even seen it. This is, hold on, I'll shrink it down. I got to, it's not fitting. Yeah. It's called Electric Dreams. I think very, I have. I mean, yeah. it's got to be 80s movie. Oh, very, very 80s. Very incredibly 80s. Um, and uh, Virginia Madsen's in it. She's terrific, by the way. And I have yeah. to say, uh, from a cinematography standpoint, it's shockingly good for the budget that it has. There's a lot of, like, like coordinated, rotating camera shots, you know, where they're cutting back and forth between the same rotation, where they'll set up a, mm -hmm. a, a circle dolly, and then they'll cut back to it on another room, you know, in these, like, musical segments. She plays the cello and lives upstairs from this guy who buys a computer because he's perpetually late for everything. And then, um, it, because everybody's using PDAs at that point, and he's like, he doesn't understand the point. This guy's literally selling him on a PDA. It's hilarious. And he's like, it helps you stay on time and make sure you don't get late for meetings because you're going to get fired. And then, the you know, he okay. instead of getting one of those and having like a version of her, the movie, he gets a computer that's ginormous. And, and it's basically like an old green screen PC or whatever. But... He tries to download his work files and he asks, do you want, and it goes, do you want all the files? And he goes, yes. And it starts downloading all the files, you know, it's like, and it becomes <laughs> the whole you know, world. Yes. Yeah, right. Yeah. And it becomes sentient essentially. And it starts to smoke cause it's overloaded and it's coming in through the phone oh, line. And and it, it turns yeah. into a woman, right? And well, no, it, not, it, that's, uh, that's a weird science. This is, Oh, sorry. Okay, it, I'm getting it, 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 it's a, it's a romantic, the uh, horror sort of, thing whatever anyways he pours he's he's gonna pop champagne with hers over there and he pours it on the computer and it's and there are these really like i i gotta say very late 90s early 2000s considering when it was made again uh shots of like the how the like the liquid flowing across the transistor is like creates this almost psychedelia in the in the comp computations okay. and it basically comes kind of alive and it knows it, it falls in love with her she plays the cello upstairs and she's playing it it's playing music along with her and she thinks he's playing like a synthesizer in his apartment i see but he won't play his music for the you know for her because he's you know, shy or whatever and they're falling in love during the whole thing and then the computer is just trying to like it's basically like a mix of like cyrano de bergerac you know roxanne where it's helping him you know in his relationship but at the same yeah, time yeah, it's you. It it locks him in the house because it has control over the <laughs> the doors and the coffee pot and all this kind of stuff. But it is it's so oddly way ahead of all this stuff, and it jumps right to it. It jumps right to it can hear music and make music, and it, she thinks it's real music that she loves this song, right? That uh, yeah, I mean that we've been made. contemplating what now is for a long time. Right? Oh yeah. <laughs> And it, and and I gotta say, but for the whole like it, you know, it, it even when it locks the doors on him, it's because it doesn't understand. It's because it's yeah. it doesn't understand the commands. It's not like I must have her, and I will, you know, it's like he didn't fall asleep and wires start creeping into his nose, and he becomes a half robot or some shit like that. It's it's a lot more like plausible even in its silliness. But sure. it's based on this fear that everybody has that that's what's going to happen. That this thing's going to start thinking too quickly. And then it's gonna yeah. take over and and whatever. Its name is and it, maybe Edgar it just doesn't history. doesn't exactly understand what I meant. It yes. thought I meant this other thing. That's and right. Those are our those are our fears, not really. Right. Uh, well, and it's also I think the you know there's a long history of you know f the concept of Frankenstein and the and and uh, essentially the Icarus wings is essentially the I guess really what it is. You fly too close to the sun in your wax wings. Because you're not really an angel, 
you're going to fall to earth and die. Right. That's yeah. that. Yeah. And that's, that's the root of all this. And it, and it goes back to that whole, like <laughs> where we're doing like, uh, when they first started dealing with like, maybe we could sew somebody's a dead guy's foot on your foot if you had an amputation. And, and so all these horror movies were made in like the forties or whatever. They gave me the foot of a killer and I'm just going around kicking people who would have been their victims or whatever. Like, the, like yeah. all of a sudden it makes you want to strangle everybody. But that's, I think that root fear is in this, but I was surprised at how on the nose with like, is this AI music real? Do people, should you get credit for this? It, can people, you know, the her storyline, the, um, the, what you call it, the um, uh, deus ex machina, ex machina, the movie, uh, which I, yeah. I got to say, we should, we should rate some that of our. That was about a Turin test, right? Like Yeah, essentially. Well, he was trying to get this guy uh, to, hold on, let me get back to here. He was trying to get this guy to help, you know, to be his guinea pig for the Turing yeah. test, which is, uh, so, you know, uh, yeah. Yeah, you're bringing up like, uh, like who, it, is it is it real or is it copied or, I mean, those are all. And does that matter, right? Is that meaningful to what you're trying to get out of it? Right, yeah. So that, that starts to come into like a lot of people's spheres of, copyright and things like that but that's more mm -hmm. law based and less like uh understanding what right you're seeing based right like mm -hmm. um and and it's you know like i i sort of sometimes parallel it to uber uh and that'll make sense in a second hopefully <laughs> okay uh, like sure. uber was really out front in um getting people to use their their capital, their car, using an app to drive people around like taxis, right? So Uber was sort of, you know, getting around rules that existed at the time for employment, for mm -hmm. taxes, for like, what is an expense? Like, what is an employee? All those things. And yeah. until laws caught up to them, and they still maybe even haven't, uh, they sort of operated in this space and things just kind of happened. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of kind of like what AI is doing right now, or at least the LLMs being used. Right. That people people understand AI through LLMs, but um, before LLMs, before it, it, maybe the term right now that's most used is Gen AI. And, yeah. and it's Gen AI is, is machine learning that's used to generate new content as mm -hmm. opposed to Previously, it was like big data kind of stuff where they'd say, we have all of this data from all the sensors out there that we have. And we want to like look at it and see if there's patterns that might help us uh, get more efficient or mm -hmm. make more money or whatever. At any rate, so right now there's this sort of separation between the tools and are the tools being trained legally and that's not really something that us as individuals have a say in it's right it's bigger it's policy it's law it's mm -hmm. um it will work itself out and then there's us using it and um that's where maybe a lot of people i talk to don't totally understand if i go and use chat gtp to write something i use midjourney to make a picture yeah it's now my responsibility it's not it's not their responsibility to deal with the copyright infringement that I'm about to go commit with that. Um, mm -hmm. And that's that's a key concept to try to understand is there's there's how it's trained and that's one set of rules that's kind of right. working itself out. But then after you use it, it's it's whoever used its responsibility to stay in compliance with whatever right. laws. Well, because especially if you're, the, I think that deals with the both the Carlin stuff and I want to say it was an Usher song that was one of the first ones that like showed up okay. like they had like write me an Usher song and then they used a sound alike to borrow his voice and just literally created a fake right. Usher song out of nowhere and it it started a chart and the question was whose is it like who owns yeah, it Yeah and I think those questions are more most uh, focused on the percentage of like how much did it change what's derivative mm -hmm. um in the Carlin case, I don't know the details. I'd have to look, but I think it's it was literally trained specifically only yes. with his his works, mm -hmm. and then they created something else. So, you know, 
this is where I'll make AI human for a second, which I tend not to do. But right. if I were to go, you know, steal George Carlin's work and make money off of it, I would go read all of his stuff. I, I would do the same thing AI did, right? Right. I would, I would go assimilate all the you'd work forge that he it. did. And then you'd, I would you'd forge, forge new work. Well, I wouldn't forge it. I would like make a new thing, which I made, but I would learn from that. And it would be then my responsibility to like, understand that I have to change it a certain amount before right. it becomes my new uh, art, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what all copyright, it's what all patent right. work is about. That's what everything is about. Um, the, well, I think uh, there's the term, a case yeah, where yeah, Bloomberg yeah. got mm -hmm. sued, where Bloomberg like trained the model and this the suit was allowed, was was focused on the training side of it. Right. And that's like the, I think that's one of the first suits where the path back to the LLM, like open AI or right. Google or Apple, that's, that's sort of the first path back to like what's on the training side and how do we mm -hmm. regulate that? Right. Well, and you know, in the case of like most artists, you have influences kind of like the Stephen King thing I was referencing earlier is that the influences play a, a huge part in it and you put your own spin on it and the like. The, the thing that I would come to in the case of both the Usher song and the, and the, you know, the Carlin bit was it's a lot more akin to someone discovering an unknown Picasso painting that had been artificially aged and they, right. you know, they studied the style of Picasso and they signed Picasso to it. That's the distinction. And I think in a lot of these cases, if you just, if they'd have done the exact same thing, create me a comedian, trained it on the on the works of George Carlin said, I want make a half hour special, an hour special. And, and they took another voice entirely or a woman's voice or a totally robotic voice or something like that. And had it do like an AI special using the style and the kind of methodology of the greats in this particular case, Carlin, uh, you know, something like that, then they wouldn't have had a problem because they would have, yeah. that would have been kind of, I think what more, what you're talking about where they're, I'll, I'll go back even learning. further. Yeah, I'll go back even further and get use your example of the Picasso, you know, forger. The forger yeah. didn't break the law until they sold the forger. Right. Uh, they can they can go forge a Picasso and put it up and hang house. it in your fucking that's house. Fine. Right. Once they once they sold it and made money off of it, that's when they broke the law. Yeah, you can and even so bullshit your friends thing. and point at it and say that's a real Picasso to anybody who comes into your house. Still not breaking the law. It's the minute right. you try to get financial exchange for that because what you're stealing is the work. And that's where right. the the I think the new part will be is that once you get past what you would call the generative AI, where you're using other people's works to make something that's directly similar to that work, where it starts learning on its own and kind of having its own, like there's so many complex elements that are put in there that is, the large language model learns on so much shit that you can't, chase it down to one person. You can't say who sure. it ripped off. And that at that point, it's kind of free and clear. Um, well, that's, I mean, that already exists in the law. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, yes. you know, when you look at something, how, uh, I think music might be uh -huh. a good way to like, or yeah. uh, example to use, because I think they bring it down to like a chord, a certain number of beats, 12, they actually quantify 12 bars. It. 12 bars to right, steal okay. a copyright as far as sampling. And then and then it's the chord progression with a melody coherent over top of it. Those two fusions. Because right. there's, you know, I'm sure you've seen those mashups where the same four chords are used over and over again in the same, right. you know, because of the, you know, the circle of fifths and the, the limited range of, you know, the eight octave scale and what have you. That, that ultimately, you know, that's everybody's going to come to the same conclusion if they're writing a pop song to some degree. But the combination of the melody in that is where it gets original, right. so you, personal. Yeah. So, I mean, everything is derivative. I mm -hmm. mean, we're we take in the world and we spit something else out. So we're mm -hmm. we're uh, right. We're, we're deriving of, out of something we saw. Right. And the new is needs to be quantifiable. Right. Uh, so in terms of um, trademark. Uh, if you have an Apple, uh, Apple has trademarked the Apple logo. Let's, mm -hmm. I guess it's a logo trademark. So how much do you need to change that logo before you're 
infringing on their mm -hmm. on their logo and i there's terminology specific to that it's similar in design patents design patents are it you literally sketch the thing that you did in in a format which is in the patent and then you take that sketch that's the picture the the figure in the patent and you look at something that's real and mm -hmm. you say if i took the real thing it does it match the drawing close enough right that a normal person would think it was the same thing uh so those are more subjective mm -hmm. and that's where it gets hard because inside of writing and inside of uh the gen ai image video mm -hmm. it's it's not as objective as it is maybe in music mm -hmm. um but then now that you've like hopefully created a set of rules that everybody agrees on it's really only in the term in terms of this the creator it's not worth anything unless you go enforce it so right the person has the person who copied it has to make enough money to make it worth going after right and the yeah. person who created it has to spend the capital to go after the money they made and that's a formula that everybody makes in this mm -hmm. in this world. Well, it's like so, the the issues with like uh, BitTorrent in the early days of right. you know of people stealing digital copies of music before you had to print it on you know flat wax essentially. Right. Um, and I you know you do have a situation where like um, uh, okay uh, like Heinrich Stotzel invents the trumpet as we know it. He and uh, Bloomsel, Bloomsel, something. Anyways, these two guys invent the trumpet in Germany. This is the type of thing, you know, in 1818s, they make this thing, the trumpet. And um, what Miles Davis did with it was probably not in the course of where they thought that invention was going. And they have no say. You get, As long as you take their device and you make whatever's coming out of it yours, they don't get to say what you do with it once it's made, right, in that regard. And right. that's where, but but y y there was no kind of refining, like, because they invented the pump valves that were on the top of that. That was the where they patented the ability to have the buttons on top, as opposed to just having to either use a slide or or the length of the instrument. You could only do a range of instruments, you know, of, of uh, things. They could shorten and lengthen the instrument through buttons. It was amazing. As, I mean, conceptually, if you, you always think of those like uh, Monty Python cartoons where the guys, where they're uh, playing the King's thing and then they have the cartoon of the two guys, uh, like the row of guys sticking it out of their ass, just the, and the big, the flag rolls down. <laughs> okay, so they had like, you know, like these lengthening of this thing and they could, they were like, what if we could just set up buttons to shorten and lengthen the fucker for this range? So they invent that. There was no rule though about oh i invented the button and he invented the the pump on that kind of thing so you guys using it for your thing the concept of it was was free and open in that regard so and it, i mean meaningfully they didn't have to worry about somebody coming after them they invented this thing after them though they could go if you want to put buttons on your instrument and you're using this pump matrix to do it we that's uh, we get credit for that mr flugelhorn or whatever the fuck but right <laughs> But point past that point, what was the what the public do with it? Marching bands and Miles Davis and and right. fucking big bands and fucking tuba players and you know and and fucking New Orleans funeral processions. That's totally none of your goddamn business. And the same thing is I think coming in terms of when we integrate elements of AI into our own functional usage. The same way we ask our, you know, talk into our phone to have it play a playlist or talk into our phone to have it, you know, gi give us directions. Right. So that that's why I'm trying to like sort of bifurcate this problem into two right. spots because the, mm -hmm. the, there's our, there's our responsibility for how it's used and yep. that's on the individual level who uses it. And mm -hmm. that's different than anything else. Like mm -hmm. it, it's, it's the other side of it where I used Uber as an example because it's a great example of recently of something that happened on such a scale that it was like, oh, they figured out how to do this magical thing that got around laws that we never contemplated this. So mm -hmm. the responsibility there is on policy level to alter the policy 
to account for the new technology, not to just say no more Uber. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's where AI, I, that's where AI kind of is right now in terms of laws and things like that, where we, we need to like do some work on the front end to right. figure out how to basically make a set of rules that everybody can play by. Yeah. But do you, my question is, and again, I'm going to have uh, these kind of like questions, you know, everybody says, OK, so one is saying uh, one person said AI can't tell the difference between um, uh, uh, something written by a person and something written by AI. That's one of the. There are people working on, yeah. on that. And so far, the algorithms that have checked that can be very inaccurate. Many false positives can come from that. But mm -hmm. they are working on them. Um, you know, like maybe maybe the, the answer down the road is actually tagging it somehow. Uh, right. Tagging whatever the output is somehow. But yes, that has to be worked on because in theory, you shouldn't be able to tell the difference, right? That's the goal. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. And and again, um, I, as a creative, I've struggled. I, I had an epiphany since the last time we spoke about this, about AI's yeah, place in right. my work, which is a big okay. deal because I think there's a, an entire genre of humans that do stuff for a living, that speci uh, specifically creatives, musicians, artists of all sorts that are like, I don't fucking like this. I don't want it to tell me. I don't want it to write jokes for me. I don't want it to write songs. I write songs and I write jokes. Fuck that. But what can it do? Well, it can certainly inspire me in ways that I might not right. thinking. It can give me a list of of topics or challenge me like a friend who goes, I bet you can't come up with a joke for this, you fucker. Like I can train an LLM, and I have, um, that that says, you know, hey, can you come up with something funny for this? And then I'll I'll germinate it. I'll go, yep, found up. Thanks very much. What's next? It doesn't have, I don't have to run it by the computer because I don't trust that it's judgment. That's not the point. I trust my judgment. But I can use it, it as a way, of, as a jumping off point. Instead of saying, right. "Here's an image. Try to paint this." It's like, um, you know, what you know, what's your favorite thing to paint? I like painting this. Almost interviewing yourself as an artist, because that's how right. that creative spark can kind of come. Which I think is kind of that was a that was a huge epiphany for me. It was like, sure, get it to challenge me, and uh, you know, in ways that I wouldn't bring up on my own. Like right. I have a, like, you know, the, or a friend, I'm not right. a, you're a curator. That's, I use the word curator in yeah. that sense, or editor is a good one too. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's similar and you're far more mm -hmm. advanced in music than I am. I barely mm -hmm. know anything about music, but <laughs> right. you know, when the synthesizer came out, uh, people were like, well, you're not really playing music cause you're not playing the horn. You're not playing the piano. You're like, oh yeah. Arpeggiators. So that was the one, that was the right. big thing. It was like so arpeggiators. Like, right. It's a similar thing where it's like, okay, if, if I have a Yamaha keyboard that can make the sound of any instrument out there, am I not able to make a horn sound? You know, like, no. Am I not allowed? Not. Right. Yeah. You, you didn't have to learn how to do it. Mm -hmm. hey, this is exactly the same thing for, it's the same sort of Well, and, and again, I, I would also, um, somebody's, I don't have anything on my nose. Someone keeps saying something. I think it's just a punk in the, in the thing. But, um, uh, um, that brings us to a twisted stepsister saying, "How can LLM write a song?" And I, I, I think the word "write" is the problem I have. Yeah. Because so the, let me. I have. A, I think I have a decent way to explain. Great. Explain how autocorrect can make a song. Right. And I use images as a good right. example for the sake of talking. But yeah. on a computer screen, an image is pixels. Mm -hmm. And so if there's, you know, 10,000 pixels that make up a picture, it's a 10,000 word sentence. And right. instead of a word, the pixel is an RGB value. Yeah. Uh, you know, a set, a set of nine numbers effectively, mm -hmm. um, maybe 12, if you have trans, if you have white and or transparency, right. whatever. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is an LLM can make a picture in the exact same way as it writes a sentence, because mm -hmm. all it does is look for patterns in the pixels as you read through them from right to left, right? Right. Music is the exact same thing. And yeah. the way that LLM sort of access anything mm -hmm. is, is through the same method that we can currently access them, right? So an LLM 
mm -hmm. could use uh, like GarageBand. You could ask an LLM to give you the direction slash code to make GarageBand do a thing, right? Right. So inside the pattern of the way you use the tool to work, it's mm -hmm. creating, it's effectively coding it. That's how it makes a song. <laughs> And yeah, it, it can do it. It can do it in bytes or bits, like uh, like a sound is this uh, ones and zeros, you know, to bring it down to basic level. Right. It can look for patterns in a song in a digital song. Mm -hmm. it, can, it can make that. That's how it does it. Well, uh, uh, uh real quick. Um, hold on. I don't know if you can. You'll be able to. Let's see if we can play this. Let's see. I don't want it. Yeah, it doesn't want to do it. Hold on. It's it's taking its moment, but there's a oh here we go. I'm oh, sorry, it bumped back on me. Um, the there's a, a site called Evoke Music, for example, and okay. uh, this is um, let's see if you guys can hear this. I think in the background. This is a, a '90s hip hop dreaming slow electronic drums. So they just. It created this. This is AI generated music. And what it's doing is it's taking stuff that's been done before and it's just kind of, you know, doubling down on, on that idea, right? Yeah, it's and auto correcting the notes. That's will. right. It's exactly <laughs> right. Don't you mean don't you mean B flat? Don't you mean like if you hit an A, most of the time it, you're going, I want to write a pop song. Okay. Well, most of the time, if you're going from A, you're probably going A E D, A E D back that way, or you're going A G C, yeah. A G C. That's where you're if you're looping in that zone. And if you go to those, then you probably use this as the diminished chord and this one as the, you know, if you go up a half step for the chords at the end. Right. And that's it. It's but the originality comes in and how you bring that to life. And and, and, right. and, and you know, you can even think of like. Um, Phil Collins is a great drummer, always was amazing drummer, actually plays the drums and the like. But the introduce the introduction of the Lynn drum to him was how he wrote some of his biggest hits. And he would play drums on top of digital drums. He would have them kick in. And that was like his, his addition was, I can't, he, and he goes, one of the reasons why, they go, why don't you just, like on Mama, which is one of my favorite songs, why don't you just play the drums on it? Why use a drum machine? And he goes, because a drum machine is relentless. Mm -hmm. That was the term he used. It's, re, it, no matter what you do as a drummer, you're always going to, throw some humanity in because you can't help it because your heart's beating and blood is flowing through your veins and all that. But a drum machine is fucking relentless. And he goes, when you're writing a relentless song, like, uh, you know, uh, you know, in the air tonight, which is re relentless and sorrowful to its conclusion, which is an explosion. The drums come in almost as an entirely different idea, Right. But listen to like or mama, which is spooky as fuck, because you know. And again, he's a drummer; he can do that. Prince used synths all the time, and he could play all these instruments. But they gave him something that was inhuman for a reason. And yeah. and in some cases, having a relentless boss that can't actually torture you, that you could flip, you could turn off. You go, I want my boss to kick my ass. I want my coach to kick my ass. But it'd be nice if I could turn it off. And it can't actually strangle me or sexually assault me or harass me in the office or any of that kind of stuff. Right? So you can have that in your life. You can have an assistant that's always dicking with you and going, you're going to be late. You got to get this. Because like, it's helpful to have that to a certain extent. Right? Right. That's, that's yeah, and, the value. And, and those are like... Like there's this concept of like this thing always happening in the background, always doing something, right, but right. it's not doing that. It's, mm -mm. it's, it's only, it only gives an answer when you, when you ask it for an answer. Right. Right. It's, it's, and that's in, in, uh, like probability or, mm -hmm. or, uh, uh, what, 
yeah, I guess mm -hmm. probability would be the right thing, like in, in a gambling machine. Uh, mm -hmm. The idea that, you know, every time you hit the button, the odds are the same. Uh, yeah. Conceptually, people think, well, if I hit the button five times, the sixth time will be better, right? Right. Because I didn't win the first five. It doesn't work like that. It's always the same right. every time you hit the button. Well, it's like, it's it, not it, because it's always playing. It's because it only... That the math is giving you it, that probability. It's singularly responsive it. to that to that input, right? And exactly. the, you know, so, and it and it doesn't wait and think like, what question will a human ask right, me next? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, and that's the part that's hard to disconnect from. Like, mm -hmm. it, it 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 only works when it's asked. Like, it's only accessed. Right. right. So the, uh, yeah. In the case of your like creative process. Uh, you know, I started to talk about that last week or two mm -hmm. weeks ago, where it's like the thing that slows you down is, oh, it'd be really cool if a horn sound was in that song. Right. But I'm not going to spend the time to go play a horn. Right. Or maybe you do. And it takes you like two months to get good enough at blowing on the horn to make the sound you want. And two months later, you've moved on. Right. Like, right. You've forgotten the <laughs> but idea. But if you have the keyboard and it's the same way with mid journey, it's the same way with chat GDP is you mm -hmm. can try it. You yeah. can try it instantly mm -hmm. and understand whether it fits inside of that creative process you're working. And if it does, you move forward with it. And if it doesn't, you try something else. Mm -hmm. Well, and you get you get the benefit of being uh, Mozart when he had a, a you know a patron who supplied him with an orchestra. Yeah. No, I, so I think you could say, oh, go play this sound. And the person already had all of the ability right. to do that. He couldn't play all those fucking instruments. They played. He played the <laughs> piano. He couldn't right. play any of that shit. He had a giant synth of human beings, by the way, who whose court life was the only thing that kept themselves and their family afloat. The fact that the king wanted to hear big fancy music was the only reason they were alive and eating. And they trained themselves and worked not just because they wanted to show off or be famous, but to keep themselves fed. And so he had access to those groups of people. Yeah. Now everybody yeah, does I mean, it. It's, it's the democratization of, of what that effort is, which he had access yeah. to. He did, right. you know. Um. You know, uh, you know, tribal leaders have control of every drummer in the tribe, right? That's the thing. They could, if I tell you, if I if I clap my hands and go woof, you guys go rump rump, and I I I don't have to run around and go rump 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 at every fucking drum, nor do I even have to know how to do it. I like think of all the the, I mean, the beauty of like Japanese drummers in those like traditional ritual, yeah, tick a tick tick a boom boom boom, that kind of stuff. Okay. Not a single emperor, nor any of his court people in those in, in that society knew how to play those fucking drums. But they sure as shit knew how to tell those people what to do. And if they liked it, they told them to keep doing it. And if they didn't like it, they told them to stop. <laughs> right? Yeah. So we're that's, all our own emperors. Well, yeah, we are all. Yeah, yeah, well, that's. I've made the argument for a long time that we, you know, we left a monarchy to become like monarchs of the easy chair, where we sit right. there with a, you know, with a, a remote control in our hand, going off with his head, off with his head, off with his head. Because isn't that what you're doing? You're like, fuck that head. The guy's that funny. Like you're killing every gesture you see, you know. Because and, and the the technology that's the the sort of the equity and equality that is going to come to humanity. I don't think I think is the biggest thing we're going to have our time grasping and the danger is obviously the terrorist monsters broken people and sick people and and you know the evil folks of all sorts will have the same access so those limits that I think you're talking about that we have to have in place are there to stop those well, people they, from, yeah they actually start to happen naturally because yes. we're so I mean like anything you know globalization for mm -hmm. all of its bad, it actually helped people in other countries realize that everybody around them was human, also human being, right? Yes, so right. It it really like brought people closer because they realized they weren't the stories they were hearing. Mm -hmm. So as AI does these things, we will a few things will start to happen. One, we're gonna see it in reality working and realize, oh, well, that's not so bad. That's, mm -hmm. And then the other thing that's going to happen is it's going to hopefully make us more skeptical. Yes. So, so many people just believe whatever they see. If 
there's this like crazy boomerang effect with AI where you're like, now I'm not going to believe anything I see. Right. And that's not actually a terrible thing because mm -hmm. now you start to actually think about how you're going to understand if it's real or not, mm -hmm. right? And that's that's critical thinking and something yeah. that we lack on on a, a right oh, well yeah on a scale that you know we haven't seen since probably the 1700s when when right. you had three sources of information and all of them related to the monarchical control of um, you know, of a particular country and right. the religious leaders that supported the idea of that monarchical control. And if you questioned it, you might end up in a, you know, in the stocks. So the, you know, at, at that point, you're like, okay, uh, who exactly am I talking to? And can I speak freely in this situation? And is this person trustworthy? And are they telling me something because they really believe it to be true or because they have to say it? You know, there was a lot of that around. There was, you look at the writings yeah. of that time, that's exactly what they were going through. So I think it's good that we, now we're not all getting, you know, we're getting a lot more dubious about video clips and short things. And like, you know, if somebody goes, he said this or she said this, I'm going to go, all right, well, I'll see the full context and then I'll let you know. We're pausing our reactionary right. stuff, our, our, you know, our over trusting, which was misused, I think, for a while. Um, finally, I think is, you know, like reality is catching up to us where we're like, OK, simmer for a second. I can still feel angry or upset or excited later. But let me make sure this is the real deal first. And that's, there's nothing wrong with that per se, especially when it comes to like knee-jerk social media posts and the like. The right. um, So we're at, the, we're at the end of the hour, and I want to thank Rob for coming on because this is always going to be kind of an ongoing, rolling conversation. And now you all have a movie to watch in Electric Dreams. <laughs> um, and, and I got to say, I it's crap. And it's adorable and it's mis misunderstandings of a lot of things and it's oversimplifications. But, I mean, it's a canon film, you know, it's Menachem Golem and Yoram Globus, you know what I mean? Those guys. So don't expect it to be, you know, um, you know, Shakespearean, you know, in its, in its <laughs> double entendres. But, um, it, but it, it, it does point to something like this is something we've been ruminating on for a long time. And everybody's like, Rob is great. I have one question on our way out the door and I'll let him go, which is, will quantum computing have an impact on AI? How will we know when the singularity has been met? And uh, do we have a way to keep secrets from AI? Those are three in a row. <laughs> That's your uh, lightning Wow, round. okay, so I, I mean- Quantum computing, yeah. Quantum computing is gonna change everything. Yeah. It's a pretty decent way, ways away, but quantum computing is like everything, so as technology moves forward in time, it mm -hmm. gets faster and the software run on, run, that runs on it gets more efficient. And those things are constantly like struggling against each other. Just right. Like we talk about Hal, like Hal mm -hmm. always overuses his computer and then <laughs> give him a faster computer and he'll overuse it again. That's right. right? Yeah. That's technology. That's the struggle of technology. Yeah. So quantum computing is I mean, it's more complex than, than I'm saying, but it, it's basically going to like increase the speed side of that equation by exponential amounts. Yeah, it's gonna be imperceptible insane. to the point where the computer gets you know, faster than the necessity of its use. Yeah, so, uh, so mm -hmm. you know, one thought would be that in theory, it should decrease the energy needed to compute. Right. So in that way, you could go the same speed at, a lot more efficient rate and thus you decrease the total amount of computing power. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, yeah, it will, it will have an effect on AI, but yeah. it'll have an effect on everything. Like every aspect, every of single life. thing we do. Yeah. You're, Our I mean, your car is a computer that's blows your laptop out of the water in terms of computing power. Like yeah. Every single car out on the road now. Um, yeah. What, what, so what yeah, high end, it's going to have high, an effect. Yeah. What high end computer chips, that used to be the, of the quality they used in, in like missile guidance systems and no human being that wasn't in the, you know, the, the excesses of the military would ever even get to see, much less have access to. Those are now in vehicles. And and yeah. what, what quantum computers will do for, quantum computers will do for buildings what chips did for cars. Let's just get like as an example, like at entire city structures your the, the plumbing, the traffic lights, all that kind of stuff, like sure. the responsibility, literally, the ability to respond to 
to shifts in wind and that kind of stuff. They, you know, the, under Taipei 101, the, the third tallest building in the world, there are these dampers that keep the thing from falling over. It's built on a system where it can bend like a bamboo reed. That was the design element of it. It's very complex. And there have to be mi building managers on buildings that tall that if there's an issue, can go everybody to damper red and everybody runs to that corner and then a bunch of people literally crank down on part of this thing till the measurement evens out and then they loosen it back up when the wind passes. You will have buildings, enormous fucking buildings, where the computer is doing it for you all the time. Yeah, that I mean, that's, like, that's where efficient efficiency of a car comes mostly from the number of sensors. Yes. And the ability right. to read those sensors at a certain speed. Yeah. The faster, the more you can sense and the faster you can sense it, the quicker you can make adjustments. Right. As quantum computing happens, it's not just like, oh, everything we do today will just happen way faster. Mm -hmm. Also, what will happen is everything we do now will have more sensors <laughs> yes. and more data. Well, and, and that's <laughs> the that's other thing, too. Do. I think the biggest question going forward is, and this is where people deal with, you know, racist AI or the potential for it and those those kind of things. You know what I mean? Um, where they're like, it, it's only getting a certain amount of input from a certain thing, so it behaves in a certain way. They, okay. Right. The, the real test of it will be the refining of the sensor ability. The, 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 the finer the data the computer can get, the more it can react to it. Once you get up to the... the thirst for data that will come from quantum computing is not that different from our skin. We are regulating cells in our body all the time based on right. the room Almost temperature. The we have no fucking idea. All I mean, your digestive tract can be affected by the amount of humidity in the air and you know elements of it all the time. You're always doing minor adjustments constantly for better or worse. Sometimes you react poorly. Sometimes that's where you like you know, as, as people get older, they're more sedentary or whatever, and they reach down to pick something up and they didn't take into account that the getting back up part and they their back hurts all of a sudden. That's one of those bad sensor moments. Some of your sensors have gone da down because you've been sitting and therefore they don't go, hey, muscle, this is about to happen and, and let it know so it can go through its process to kind of ar articulate up. So the details coming in, I think, are the next big phase how exactly it's just this? more information and then correlate uh cause and effect in right astronomically high amounts of data right you know the, the next one um, was uh was uh the singularity which is kind of around the same thing I, it's yeah i mean yeah i i'm not like i don't i actually purposely keep this idea of but, singularity or of, right. of some of a computer becoming human out of my mind because sure. i think it's that's more of a of 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 an analogy we are applying to it right um, an and anthropomorphization act than an actual I, technology that's how i like to look at it as a person mm -hmm. who's not a doctor of physics you know <laughs> yeah right right <laughs> like because because I don't know that it's really useful. It's just as, yeah. as a thing to hold in your mind. Well, I, I've always cares? thought it's like whatever right. it is, it is, right? Right. And also, I've always thought of the singularity as I understood it was not necessarily the idea of a sentient computer system that finally wakes up, but the singularity being where the roads of humanity and technology cross and never uncross. So we become yeah, effectively <laughs> more cyborgs than anything else in a way that is permanent to our structure to where we are you know when a to the point where when a child is born you know we are either bi biologically through very high end technology we kind of almost can't fathom yet where you just drop something on the back of the kid's neck and it goes into your nervous system and now you have access to the entire you know uh, the uh, like the 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 library of alexandria because it's you're just part of that and if you travel through space and time as a human being over decades and live longer and all that kind of stuff, you have permanent access to all the technological availability around, uh, you know, uh, right. around you. That's, 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 that's the singularity. That's where humans and, and technology you know, converge and never, never break apart. Um, I'll get like a, a little higher level than that. And that is that the, in order to get there, the level of in infrastructure, as we think about it today, is going to be... In, at such a place that it's going to be everybody's responsibility to take care of everybody. And yeah. so maybe 
maybe that is the singularity, I guess, mm -hmm. as opposed to like there's this sentient being living in the computer doing doing stuff. Right. And do they have rights as an individual and stuff like that? Like it, we're we're pretty far away from yeah what that is, and I'm not well, even sure that it exists. Like no, I don't think it. I, and by the way, I think it's a weird. It's an analogy that's scarier than it is useful and not yeah, realistic. I, I think we're a lot closer to human computer interface on a regular Absolutely. level. That's where you know Elon Musk is trying to get ahead with his uh, you know his brain implants and the like. And I think that's going to be like the early Betamax version of how this shit is done yeah. because I don't think you're going to have to do it. Again, once the sensors get strong enough, you can use it on yourself. So, um, But that'll be for next time. People can contemplate that part of it. And then um, <laughs> the, the last one, how do we keep secrets from AI? And I would I would just say you don't. You use AI to... I, that's, you know, like you get to a point where either there are no secrets anymore. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> hate to say it, but... Or... Mm -hmm. uh, like, I think a lot of people forget that you can use AI mm -hmm. for both positive and negative. Like, yeah. so, so like they start to equal each other out, right? Mm -hmm. Like, um, as a lot of people worry about quantum computing, meaning takes away all encryption. Well, then mm -hmm. there'll be quantum encryption. So it's like, right. You know, like, it, it, it all sort of goes together. Right, right, right. So um, I, I agree. And I think the other thing is, you know, we will get to a more open society about our failings as humans uh, in, in the interim as well, in the same way that we are kind of like yeah. talking about legalizing drugs and sex work and some other stuff, because the more you're aware of it, the more you're aware that a lot of people participate in it. And you've got to find a humane way for it to actually happen without punishing people for it, because it's going to be known. Right. Right. And, yeah, and mean, once we get to that point, sorry. right. Yeah. Once we get to that point, it's the computer's just going to go. Everyone in this entire area is breaking the law. And they're like, "Oh, well, yeah, we know that, but we don't give a shit because it's kind of it's, it's it's fine. It's it's not it's not so much a law as a, or of a guideline. I mean, it still says law in there, but you know, we don't really live like that. And it's like you don't. No, okay, well then it's okay. Yeah, okay, then oh, suddenly AI is written and passed a law that it's okay now. <laughs> like there's, you know, we're not whether it's here or on a Mars colony, shit like that's going to happen at some point. Yeah, I mean, so. we, we we are so reliant on each other today. And mm -hmm. when those links break, like when COVID happened and chips stopped coming from Asia and we couldn't sell a car, you yeah. know, like th those things, uh, they stop happening as we become, I mean, this is back to the singularity, but yeah. So in order for those things to stop breaking, you have to take away secrets. Mm -hmm. It's that simple uh, because how can you distribute the creation of, of objects that are needed for our lives to exist without sharing it? You know, I, we run into that a lot at, in our company where we get entrepreneurs that come to us and say, I have this idea. Can you, but I don't want to tell you what it is because yeah. I, you might steal it. And it's like, yeah. well, if you don't tell me what it is, I can't help you. So you're just going to have to, tr you know, there's laws, there's a uh, legal documents for that. But in order for something, something to happen, right? Like, you know, for us, it's a new product. You have to show it to somebody. Right? Yeah, so it's right. not a secret anymore. Well, it, you know, I, 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 you know, similarly, I have a dear friend who's very funny, but it would not tell some of his jokes for fear someone would steal them. And I'm like, well, then they're not your jokes. They're not your yeah. jokes till they're told. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. And I mean, we're being a little flippant with stuff because it's, but yeah, but that's where it's got to go. Yeah. We have to go there. As yeah. Can. Eventually. So, well, thanks so much, Rob. I appreciate it. I kept you over Thank a little bit. I really me. appreciate it. Yeah, no absolutely. We'll, we'll talk about it again very soon. And I'm sure people will have even more questions. And next time I'm going to, you know, after everybody's watched Electric Dreams and seen what I was talking about, uh, next time I, I want to go over some software with you. Uh, the problem with planning it out ahead of time too far is because it, I mean, you know, it becomes so obsolete so quickly that AI companies yeah. are, they're in just, they're in a real pickle. <laughs> like, the faster so, things progress, the harder it is to develop, which means you have to develop differently. Yeah, right. That's true. Um, so thanks so much, brother. Really appreciate Thank it. Thank you, everybody. everybody uh, yeah. Give it up for Rob. Uh, cheers. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Hal. Yeah, Bye, absolutely. chat.
Yeah. See you later. Thanks so much, Rob. See you. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Um, great stuff. And I, 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 you know, I hope that helps you guys um, understand um, what's going to effectively become the new abnormal over this. <laughs> the kidney is not the new abnormal. No matter what you think. Kidney is the kidney. Um, anyways, we are, let's see, uh, we are uh, just a special structure, same as an intelligent machine. Mm, not quite. Uh, Rob did a presentation for my students uh, and I um, on bringing idea to Mark. Oh, that's awesome, Connie. Um, uh, sorry. Uh, thank you, Carl. Electric Dreams is on Amazon Prime. It's also on YouTube, but... Uh, but yes, that's, that's cool. Um, also, um, let's see, I'm going to go watch, uh, whoops, sorry. I missed that. Sometimes it skips ahead. Just got here. Could you go uh, segment over again? Yes. What? <laughs> You're not going to say that again, are you? Um, right. Um, my dinner with Andrew was the movie they were talking about. Um, thank you, water goddess. Hold on. Um, yes, the kidney is always watching. Phil's not on today. Phil will be on tomorrow on the radio show. I think he's going to be fine. Um, you know, House Parks, I am as confused as ever being a boomer and all. I understand. Um, hopefully, we will be able to, um, yeah, um, ex you know, bring you to a position where you'll, over time, you'll grasp this bit by bit. Because I would like, to, that's why I'm trying to talk about this on the regular, to kind of, introduce you overall to the concept as far as what part it can play in your life. And I really do, uh, I, I really did mean it when I, I've struggled with what the fuck point it would have other than just being kind of like a digital assistant to some degree, which is very limited on what it can do um, for me as an artist. Until I realized that having a, a creative partner that challenges you without input is incredibly hard to find. Somebody that doesn't want to put their two cents in, like you're a songwriter and you're writing a song, but you don't want the other person to um, to step on your work. You know that you know you want it to be an expression of what you're doing. S yeah, it's it's super important, and it's almost it was impossible till now. In in many ways, in the same way, uh, you know that concept of the 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 drum machine being relentless. That was impossible. That form of art was, uh, you know, relatively impossible. I mean, I'm sure you could have set up some sort of one of those, like, music boxes with an arm that turns set on something that, you know, it's set up to, like, running water, so it would just go on and on and on. But, um, yeah, we have some notes, right? That, uh, that relentlessness was impossible, and it gave us music that was heretofore impossible that we all love. And so I think AI can do a lot of that. Um, Vegas is an AI savant. It's true. It is. It is true. He's, uh, um, um, I, th I think he, he said something about it, like, yeah, man, I use, uh, um, uh, chat, uh, uh, GED. I don't know if y'all are familiar with that. Chat GED. That's chat, get her done. He just didn't tell it what you wanted it to do and it'll go out there and do it. And, uh, you know, you just sit there on your fat ass as the day goes by. And then eventually you're like, maybe I should read a book. And then you come to your senses. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, chat GET is the she hit. And you can't, can't she's wondering. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Come on. You know who needs that chat GED? That Lauren Boebert. Yeah, I heard she was grievously overserved at a Mar-a-Lago party. I got to tell you, there's a chance she drank too much. There's also a very big chance, because it was a Mar-a-Lago party, that she mistakenly let the wrong person fix her a fucking drink, and all of a sudden she's like, normally I can hold my liquor when there's not weird little pills floating in the bottom of the glass. So I just, ladies, if you're going down there to that Mar-a-Lago, I'd say, uh, Keep walk around with your hand on top of your glass like that and use a fucking straw. 
right? Is a, preferably what you want to do, ladies, and don't tell me how I know this is important. Get yourself a straw, put a little piece of gauze on the bottom of it, and a little rubber band. That way, if they, you know, if they've got that crushed shit and they try to drop it in there, it ain't fully mixed. At least the chunks ain't getting up in your straw. Lowers the dosage, give you more control over yourself. Or here, here's a good idea. Don't drink alcohol around strange men, especially in a closed environment. Oh, and don't get me started on Roseanne. Somebody's like, did you say Roseanne? How? Go get Roseanne. All right, I'll, I'll see if I can find her. Um, for those of you that don't know, uh, Roseanne was at, at uh, Mar-a-Lago. And uh, not good. Not, uh, not, not too, not too good. Um, oh shit. Um, Bob Seska, I love you, Bob Seska, and I want to have your babies near the first tee at Bedminster. <laughs> Wait, so you telling me the epicenter of the New York City earthquake was Trump National Golf Club in Bedminster? It just moved the headstones. What headstones? Nobody gets a headstone here. Did somebody give my dead wife a headstone? What is this bullshit? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Hold on, let me bring over the... Uh, let me put it on chat. Hi, guys. Yeah. Yeah, that's from Poltergeist, for those that don't know. Some of those bodies were real. Yikes. Um, let's see. da da, da. Um, all right, hold on one second. I'm going to find the Roseanne thing. I'm sorry, I got stuck reading a, uh, a Marion Williamson post. Never let that happen. Um, let's go, Roseanne. There. Oh, God. Um, yeah, so this is, this is what people were talking about. Hold on, let me pause this and I'll start it up when it's in here. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, this, this, I, I can't even, it, uh, hmm. I mean, this looks like somebody who would wander around in that kind of room with a picture of fucking Donald Trump in, in, at a body weight he never actually had, except when cocaine was a thing, I suppose. Um, just skinny, but, uh, yeah. Hello, girls. How are you doing? I'm here at, uh, Mar-a-Lago supporting Carrie Lake, and it was a fantastic evening and our trump is here our trump he's a he's he's collective property now is that what you fucking commie <laughs> in the dj and i've just danced and everyone's amazed so i'm just everyone's amazed that you just danced as opposed to what throwing a fit it's going to say to you please drop out of college because it's going to ruin your lives do me a favor they don't teach you nothing good. Uh, they don't teach good things well, I think. Yeah. Uh, email me or... Mm, I, I mean, uh, honestly, uh, I think one of the things that you'll probably get that's really valuable from a college education is that it will get rid of your desire to email Roseanne for advice. Twitter me or whatever you call me and I'll help you with your life. But you whatever they call you? I don't think you're going to like some of the things they call you. You've got to get out of college because it isn't nothing but devil worshipping, baby blood drinking, Democrat donors. <laughs> Notice the person who's filming her just starts backing away at that point. Like, totally, yeah, college sucks. You what now? Fuck me. God, ugh. No, it's not, I don't have a problem with what she's saying. It's her breath. It's just, I don't know what that was. Love ya. Again, you either really mean it and you're a fucking lunatic or you or it's just all bullshit. And by the way, you're standing in front of the fucking weird Trump painting that he used charity funds to pay for. And she wanted to. You know, you know she had a picture just taken in front of this fucking thing, right? Lord almighty. Whatever's in her drink is the same thing something somebody slipped uh Bobert when she was there at that party. Good God. Now, um, meanwhile, back on fucking Earth, um, if I may. Why is this? I don't know why this doesn't want to open anything. It's very curious. Mm -hmm. I'll just open my things. Da -da -da. 
Um, <laughs> where are we? Da -da -da. Yeah, two things. One was, uh, well, it's, I'll just jump into this guy. So um, in case you don't know, um, the, the, the jobs numbers came out and boy, did it fuck with everybody. The, yeah, it's a, not, uh, not, not good. Not, uh, not good for the folks over at Fox. 303,000 jobs added in March, still blazingly hot. And of course, the big concern is, and see if anybody can spot the flaw, well, I wouldn't say flaw, the, the moment where their entire argument becomes bullshit. This would be the Maria Bartiromo and crowd on Fox Business Live. Here with you, your reaction to this jobs report. Very good, uh, Maria. The, uh, the, the household employment was actually up almost 500,000. The unemployment rate fell. The work week was stable. Uh, it looks really good. By the way, isn't that Steve Forbes or whatever? Is it, like, he looks fucking miserable. But right now, certainly. <laughs> yeah, look at him. Look at, his, look at his fucking face. I know the audio's low because it's on here. Um... It's, it's Twitter audio, beg your pardon. I'll, I'll try and stay quiet. Sure. Better than uh, than consensus expectations. Better than I, a lot of other... Hold on, let me... Hold on. I'll, I'll see if I can... Uh, I'll see if I can find the full thing, chat room, as opposed to pulling it off of Twitter, you know, based on whoever pulled it uh, off there. Let me see. Um, let's see. Fox uh, Business. Oops. Maria Bart Rumu uh, Jobs re Report. Okay, and then I'll see if the video comes up. There you go. Um, what the? Holy shit! What the fuck is? Can I can I show you what Fox News has up on there? So I I found this. Uh, where are you? I don't know why it's not coming up. Um, this is, uh, I, I typed in, you know, there you go. Fox News, Maria Bartiromo, new jobs report, good news for economy, bad news for the Fed. Um, hold on. Let me scroll it down here. Nope. There we go. There you go. Um, that's, that's the whole thing. There it is. Three hours. That's just a headline. No actual anything. Go down here, and it's immigrants have a hundred thousand new jobs. Uh, and by the way, immigrants, not illegal immigrants, but that's important too because of the visas that they get. Uh, it's very telling, um, because you know Trump and all of his ilk. Um, yeah, here we go. Let's go to videos, and then we'll pick the. I'm almost afraid to put on like. We just we should just do a retrospect of I, I think that's got to happen. Okay, I'm gonna put that together at some point in the near future. Just all the times Maria Bartiromo has gotten this fucking uh, the, like the bad news that the news is good. Um, no, that's not it. Okay, I'm trying to find a, a louder version of that that thing. Hold on, because she's clearly. Um, okay, John's report. Let's go to the videos and why are you not letting me choose? I hate when these fucking friends. Okay, say so, sorry. Filter. There we go. Uh, date. Past twenty four hours. There we go. Nope. It's not coming up on on regular YouTube. Only on on X. What a shock. Um, let me see if I can, uh, I don't know, I'll try to pump it up uh, some other way. Um, it's, uh, it's always fascinating when, uh, let's see, when Maria Bartiromo and her crowd want to want to do a whisper campaign. Uh, there we go, Bartiromo, there we go. See if this is a little louder. 
is live. Stronger than expected. Headline number for March, 303,000 jobs added in the month Thousand. of March. The expectation was 200,000. Revisions, February revised down by 5,000 to 270,000. Unemployment rate unexpectedly drops from 3.9%, which was a two-year high, to 3.8%. Immediate reaction in the market, uh, Maria, I am seeing futures moving a little bit higher, and... Ouch! It's gotta suck to be you. Maria Bartiromo, what do you do? It's gotta, gotta, gotta suck to be you. Every job reports the same old tune. It's gotta suck to be you. All right. That's all I'm getting at the moment. I'm trying to get my rates, but there. Yeah, get the get. Yeah, get something, some something in the red, please. Besides our our label graphic, Fox Biz Alert, red, red, green alert. Oh shit. Stronger than expected at the surface report. I'll continue to dive in to get you some of the wages and the other stuff, Maria. Yeah, well, look, we're looking at a market that is up, but off of the highs, okay? We're losing steam, and we're losing steam fast. The <laughs> no, 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 we're not. Asshole, with a market this big, this is people taking their fucking wins. And, it, like, DJT is, it, like, responsible for half the NASDAQ dip. The March jobs report out, uh, and it is better than expected, hotter than expected, 303,000, Lauren just told me. That's hot. That's the problem with it. You're going to get burned. Joe Biden and his jobs bullshit is flying too close to the sun. Dan Niles, give us your, uh, your reaction to this, to this report as the market. Oh, yeah, cr crude oil is down. That's a good point. So is gold. It loses its rally. It is now now up 20 points and going lower. Well, you got to remember. It's up 20 points and going lower. Some of this was discounted yesterday, Maria, and that the market sold off pretty hard. Um, it was the worst down day since February. And don't forget, the ADP report earlier this week came in much higher than expected as well at about 184,000. By the way, this is... Uh, the reason people sell stocks in this particular instance when they find out that, uh, you know, jobs, that unemployment is staying low and the people are hiring is because when you hire people <clears throat> and you pay a, them a wage, that's money that doesn't go out the door as profits or dividends. So the, the investor class or the fucking, you know, day traders all bail on shit when the audio is uh, good. So. so I think everybody, including myself, was expecting this number to come in higher than 200,000. 300,000 is obviously higher than even I expected. But you have to remember, a lot, I think a lot of the move yesterday, obviously Iran, you know, Israel conflict had, had a lot to do with it. Right, yeah, Iran threatening to destroy Israel kind of, you know, affected some prices. Didn't make oil go higher, that's weird. But you were also... It's almost as if the entire market is being manipulated right now. Odd. Discounting the fact that we all expected this number to come in hot because at the end of the day, as you know, we. No, you didn't. No, no, you didn't. Expectations were a hundred thousand short of what it actually turned out to be. You weren't expecting it to come in hot, asshole. You don't get to revise history on behalf of Maria and all of her dipshit, you know. Brady Bunch crowd that uh, shows up every time these reports come out because they're hoping for a dunk. We started off discussing the economy is doing better than everybody expected. We were. Mm. Ouch! It's gotta suck to be you, Maria Bartiromo. Hey, what do you do when it sucks to be you? I got a little suck. All right. We're all thinking there was a recession late last year. Were we? Were, were, were we? Were we? How ch thoughts on the Chinese economy? Uh, he, yes, it'd be nice if there was one. <laughs> I'll tell you in a second. 12 months ago, and then you got 3% GDP growth. That is because Joe Biden's giving all of our something to China. That is why. That is what. This is clearly what's happening. That is what's happening. That is what's happening. This is what. This is the dump is terrible because obviously we've got a compromise president. And right now it looks like that's going to continue for a while. And mm -hmm. yeah, uh, as as long as Joe Biden's still in office. 
So I think you're in this phase where earnings is the thing you have to look at because. Or yeah, fucking people and their wages. Am I right? What a bunch of assholes. This number may have come in at 300,000, but as I'm looking at the futures right now for the S&P, they're still up. Ouch. They're still up. They're still up. Yeah. So that tells you a lot. And I think. Yes, it does. It tells you a lot. It tells me that uh, maggots have been doubling down on this shit. Hold on. With uh, with Trump and they just can't. They're, they're, they don't even fucking want to be free of it. Again, it's the policy. It, 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 one of the things that uh, people will say is, ah, Biden's an old fuck and he doesn't know anything about anything, even though um, he's the president. He has to okay all these things. He's the, he's the yes guy and the no guy. So he's at least got to make those decisions. And then he's like, there's just people around him that are all doing this. Okay, well, okay. Oh, thank you for the super chat. That was amazing. Um, bless you. And, and Mende, thank you for gifting the subs. That was amazing. Um, I just saw that too. Um, that uh, they're like, ah, Joe Biden doesn't know shit about that. He's just got people around him who are actually running things. Well, then apparently he knows the best people and your guy doesn't. Didn't Trump run on knowing the best people and I have the best, I can call, if I need to do these deals, even though I know how to do it all myself, I know more than the generals and I know all this shit. Nah, I, uh, I know all the best people. I can get them on the phone and they'll go, hey, make this deal and do this thing. I know the best people. Well, apparently they didn't return his fucking phone calls, especially in, he didn't know the best people in dealing with a fucking pandemic. That was clear. And and obviously, like, it, like his his tax cut blew a fucking hole in the deficit. Six trillion before COVID even fucking showed up. Right? So if the idea is that well, Biden doesn't know because he's old or whatever. He, old, he knows well enough to hire people who do. How many uh, like CEO tech billionaires know exactly how to code the new shit? Mm, not a lot of them. You think uh, Steve Jobs engineered the inner workings of any of the Macs that brought the company back during his tenure? Personally, no. It, uh, I'll tell you what, sometimes... And this might be amazing for people to hear me say, um, sometimes there's value in admitting what you don't know and having the wisdom to outsource that act, uh, that expertise to a person who does and make the and keep the ethical judgments, the moral and phil philosophical and political judgments for yourself. Whether it's a good idea on the whole, whereas the implementation is left to people who know how to implement these things. Right? You're making a decision. Which direction are we going to go? Once we go in that direction, you're not going to micromanage the fuck out of it because you don't know. You, you're not the sensor itself. It's like somebody, it, it, like, Trump is the kind of person who, like, if he was, it, he can't drive, so this is a bad analogy, I understand. But if he was trying to back up a car, he's such a fucking like self-involved micromanager he would put the car in reverse get out of the car and run around behind the car and wave it back until it ran over him <laughs> i know what i'm doing this is i gotta tell it where to go like that's what the steering wheel's for don't tell me what to do my neck hurts when i turn around and look back there's a screen you know on these new cars or whatever they, i don't trust them they're too small and they don't go far enough <laughs> yeah yes Biden can understand experts. Trump thinks he is the expert. And he ain't. Um, is this a... Uh, Reserve. And when the Fed will... Hold on, this, is, this business. Is, yeah, it's as loud as these get. It's a good number, but is it too good for race rate cuts? What does it mean for the Ukraine aid package? It means it's getting harder and harder for these dickheads to argue that they know what they're doing um, and shutting shit down. Like, we're the party of no, really? Because the party of yes is apparently kicking your sorry ass. Hashtag America rocks. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is, uh, I think this is the rough one. Where is it? Yeah. March jobs report is crossing the tape right now. Lauren Simonetti with the breaking news. Lauren. Yeah, that was longer than expected. Headline number for March: three hundred and three thousand jobs. Three hundred and three thousand jobs. 
As this is what we're doing. Um, ouch. It's got to... That's, that's a rough one. Yeah. 300,000 uh, jobs in March, higher than the 214. Past two months of job growth, uh, job growth were revised up by 22K. Um, it's got to be rough. That's a, that's a tough one, kids. Some rough shit. Um, yeah, hold on. Let me leave this page. <laughs> Republicans remind me of the blue meanies from Yellow Submarine, smashing everything, bringing misery. Yeah. Someone in the White House keep telling the ordinary people that sh that chisel until November 2024. Um, uh, I I think they are. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm, that really burned. Just in Judge Mershon has denied Trump's effort to subpoena NBC for details of new Stormy Daniels documents. <laughs> Get your own leaked documents. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, Bobolinsky's gonna is trying to sue a bunch of people for uh, defamation. By the way, uh, how do you think that shit worked out when Trump tried it? Trump did the same shit. He sued CNN and everybody else. His shit got thrown out. Sorry, if if they report on you and they're like, yeah, we can't figure out what the fuck this guy actually brought to the company as far as value or any of that stuff, and he seems like an asshole, I, I guess you're kind of stuck with that label, dude, until you can shake it. Back out at Mind Dumps fundraiser go? Uh, I well, not well. I see Kiss sold their catalog. Did you buy it out? Uh, no. <clears throat> well, no. I already own a copy of everything. So yeah. Fish lips are gonna go retro. I can feel it. You people, like, there's gonna be a period where people are like, "Man, I miss fish lips." When you'd have those big fucking. She she sounds like an air raid siren. She is. It's panic. Um. The uh, okay. I'm trying, like, I'm going through here. Um, did Trump raise more than Biden? No. Um, my concern is what the dummies are going to do when Trump loses. I mean, they can't run far, but some of them have machine guns. Yeah, you, there's definitely, that's the biggest concern, is that is pop-offs from a lot of these, uh, like, his, his more anti-American crowd, is that when he loses fair and square, they won't be able to deal with it. And, yeah. His lawyers are going to be sanctioned for filing dumb stuff, so that's something to look forward to. Yeah, Bobolinsky, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, Crockett entered into the record that Bobolinsky's lawyers got 10K from a Trump pack. Yeah, I mean, that, it, that's where all the funding was. Like, he's like, my favorite part, I think, I mean, there's a lot of bullshit in that, um, the hearing that he was at. But they were they're like, hey, how'd you end up as a guest of Trump's at the Trump rally? He's like, I don't know. My lawyers worked it out. I just went to that where my lawyers told me to go. But they just somebody, I don't know. I, but how did you actually walk into play? Like, who met you outside and walked you in? Like, how? You didn't just show up and go, you know, like, throw a Bobolinsky card down and go, yeah, they just let me in wherever. How the fuck did that happen? Like, you, I don't remember. I see. Uh, I see. But, but Biden is old and doddering and can't remember shit. Gotcha. Uh, how you need to find footage of Maria in 2020 covering her enthusiasm for Trump's numbers. Oh, you mean where she's trying to polish his turds? Yeah, not a, not a bad idea. Um, I'll see what I'll see what I can find. Uh, you know, by the way, feel free to uh, to at me uh, videos that you'd like me to see of that kind of stuff, too. Um, yeah, Biden and the Democrats overall are winning the money race by miles, too. Um, now, please tell us that Trump will indeed lose in the swing states. He will. He might win one swing state, but he's going to lose others in the process. I'm not worried at all. Thank you, Martin, for the super sticker. Yeah. <laughs> the Let's see. It's not fair that Trump thinks he can use the maggots lunatics to commandeer our election process like an asshole. Well, I mean, uh, first of all, he can only think like an asshole, so I don't know that you're going to get some deviance on that uh, standard error. Um, but I... But get used to it, because that's that's what he's hoping for, because he thinks that's enthusiasm. He thinks that his supporters' willingness to kill people on his behalf is enthusiasm. I have never seen love like this. I haven't seen love. We haven't seen this kind of... It's the enthusiasm I see. The crowds are smaller, but they're very enthusiastic. Oh, you mean crazy. 
That's what you're talking. That you are fucking. That your followers are fucking crazy. Yeah. Blew up and down the ballot. Absolutely. Ra- yeah, I have rabid followers. You know that's not a good thing, right? Uh, that would be a ter. If that was true, that would be a terrible, terrible, terrible thing. Hold on. Uh, by the way, somebody was asking me earlier um, about the uh, Chinese economy. Mm, not good. As, as Trump would say, not too good. Um, I, my, I, 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 I have to say, I love the way um, that everybody's trying to tap dance around it, though. <laughs> because uh, now I now remember what Maria about about that that tell you. That, uh, yeah, that Joe Biden is owned by China. And that's why China's doing so great right now. Because Joe Biden's in office. And, and Joe Biden is Joe Biden. Joe Biden. It's a, Joe Biden just, it, just, it just bought out by the Chinese. Do we have a compromised president? That's what I'm asking you. Do we have a compromised president? Joe Biden is compromised president. So, um, that's why, yeah, that's why China's doing awesome fucking gangbusters right now, kids. I, uh, they've... Yeah, this how uh, they bought the president, and the president's just giving them everything. They ah uh, fuck. Well, maybe not. China's economic plans fail to measure up to the task. Um, by the way, this is the uh, this is from the two sessions. This little picture right here. This is the gathering of the government there, where everyone claps in unison. So uh, fuck off with their uh, this president shit. He might be the presiding chairman, but he's the chairman of the CCP. Calm the fuck down. He wasn't chosen by the people to preside. Yeah, anything but. And they all sit there and there. Uh, and uh, the, the phrase you will hear most at, uh, at in in the two sessions is mayo. You'll hear the people go, which is uh, don't have any. Yo means to have. Mayo means don't have. And in the case of what they're talking about is dissension. So they, they have little guys stand around all these sections and everybody votes and then there's a guy that says stands up and basically says we are essentially by saying mayo he means we have we're all in agreement there are there's no dissension in this section i've checked yeah fabulous exactly how yeah we just like who wants mustard mayo that's not what we're asking all right um yeah Yo and mayo. Sure, for sure. Yeah. To, like, uh, is and isn't. The word for isn't sounds a lot like boosher. You know, bullshit. But it's just not is. Yeah. Anyway, the Chinese Communist Party has fallen short of the ec- economy's needs. Again. <laughs> it has arranged lots of meetings. And its leaders have made lots of speeches full of upbeat rhetoric, but they have shown no imagination and offered little of substance to deal with China's serious and manifold economic challenges. This is an article in Forbes. (laughs) This isn't something like, I wrote trying to be nice. This is fucking Forbes. Like, I don't know, I keep hearing shit, but I don't fucking, they don't seem to be doing any goddamn thing. (laughs) Meanwhile, uh, Janet Yellen was there, and um, this uh, this this is the fucking tap dance. This isn't what she said in private. This is her nice uh, version of this, right? Uh, Yellen says China's overcapacity. They're making a bunch of shit no one wants. Poses risks to the world economy. Uh, key takeaways. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said Friday that concerns are growing over the global economic fallout from China's excess manufacturing capacity. It isn't the capacity. It's it's the flooding the market with cheap goods and, and the use of resources to do it and the clogging of shipping lanes for it. She also criticized China's government for the unfair treatment of American and other foreign companies. Um, that's a nice way of putting it. Unfair. Yellen called on Beijing to return to the pro-market reforms of the past. Uh, Yeah, well, uh, about that. Um, There's two possibilities here, and neither of them are good. One 
is that uh, Xi Jinping... Other uh, data might suggest the PMIs, for example... Shut up. Um, uh, that uh, Xi Jinping is not close to the idea of market reforms or, or you know, being relatively normalized, you know, normalizing uh, relations economically and business-wise with the rest of the world. He's just too fucking stupid and bullheaded at the same time in a very Trumpian way to pull it off. He's just an idiot. He's a, he, he's pathologically stupid and egomaniacal at the same time, which is, uh, no matter what maggots will say, a terrible recipe uh, for for leader soup. And that's that's the that's the upside. The downside is, and this is increasingly looking like the possibility, is that he wants to return to a Mao level communism, a Mao, not this socialism with Chinese characteristics that he's been bullshitting about, but full on Maoist communism. And to do that, you have to destroy any semblance of or faith in the the uh, a functioning economic system. The, the entire populace has to lose complete faith in business as it stands for, for them to allow that to happen. And that takes a lot. It, it means m making everybody's life intentionally, horrifyingly miserable and blaming it on business and killing a bunch of people that you blame to make yourself the savior. Those are the only two options in this situation. Either the dude is fully corrupt and wants to go back to Maoism and is going to murder a bunch of people to do it. He's been in that process for a while, but the question is, is that it, is he doing it out of bullheaded stupidity or is he doing it because he wants it to actually, you know, he wants to wreck it. So don't want the Chinese government to fail, just change. Well, that's the thing. It, the Chinese government cannot change and still be the CCP. The only way it's going to change is if the CCP fails. I mean, you know, people yammer about revolution in our own country, but that's genuinely needed over there. Same, that you know, it's the same with Iran, for fuck's sake. So, um, it's, there. there's no lightning of this. You know, uh, where, you know, soft, a soft and cuddly version of the CCP at this point. That That's not where they're going. Either by choice or by accident, or just by its natural fail structure, that this is just they've they've been chopping at this fucking tree, not realizing what they're doing, and they, they the wind is turned and it's going to fall on the house instead of out in the yard. It uh, that's the that's the best and nicest and most charitable version of what it could possibly you know what could possibly be going on. More than likely, though, it's you know it's a combination of of a mix of people in there. People who want to go back to a Maoist system where they had more control, specifically Xi Jinping, but also want the creature comforts of being wealthy. That's where you get that that's where you get Russia, modern Russia from. Modern Russians are effectively like we want to structure the the Russian government. We want to structure like the Soviet Union where we have absolute control, but we want access to the world markets for all of its creature comforts because we're a bunch of hedonistic scumbags. And that's what you got. I mean, Mao was a hedonistic scumbag. And they all envy him. It's very weird. So the, okay, the other thing. Exclusive. China's ambassador outlines ambitious plan to jump start the economy. This is two hours ago, ladies and gentlemen. Um, well, what do you think? Uh, first of all, how many times are we going to see that fucking headline? How many times have we seen it over the last year? The last two fucking years? It's, it's not happening. Like, there is no, you're not jump-starting this. The patient is dead. You are going to have to raise a new baby from scratch if you want a living human being on that table because this, this man is dead. Um, yeah. Mm. Yeah, they, they're, they're going to need no more than that, Momad, you. Um, yes. Uh, as questions loom, this, this is lovely, hold on. As questions loom, do they? They just kind of loom. They're just looming over there. Over the future of the Chinese economy, or if indeed there will be one, which is now facing one of its most serious challenges of the century. <laughs> one? One. That's adorable. Beijing's top diplomat in Washington has outlined to Newsweek 
his nation's ambitious new plan to accelerate growth mainly through investment in high-tech and emerging industries. Do tell. First uh, introduced to the public by Chinese President Xi Jinping in September of 2023, you know, no time like the present. If you saw this difficulty coming, it's what you want to say, hey, I got a solution, but you're not ready for it yet. I'm just going to hang back till things get really shitty in kind of a permanent sense where I'm going to wait till things are unsalvageable before I try. All right. Um, yeah, the term new quality productive forces Phew. has since echoed across Chinese official communications and media outlets. New quality productive forces, which by the way, in case you don't know, that's this shit right here. This, uh, this business, new quality productive forces. Um, what, th what they mean is quality, not quantity. That's where they think they're going. I don't know. <laughs> no. First of all, you guys are not in the quality business. You haven't been for a long time. You used to be. Chinese people are totally capable of it. Don't believe me? Ask Taiwan. <laughs> right? It's not, it's not about the, the, genetic capability of a group of people it's who's running the fucking joint and the people who are running the fucking joint and have been running it for 60 fucking years are not in the innovation business um but what they're trying is new quality productive forces that's what they mean quality over quantity because they have too much shit and they have deflation and nobody wants to buy anything and nobody wants to make anything because you don't even know why you're making it it's Soulless and gross and whatever. Okay. Uh, has since echoed from Chinese communication and media outlets, international observers have also caught on weighing in on what the People's Republic hopes to be. <laughs> One moment, please. Needs eyes or from up. Didn't know I could speak Chinese, did you? Um, uh, you said what? Well, emergency manager, sir. Sorry, get out of here. Um, the economy has been, <laughs> this is lovely. The economy has been beset by obstacles. Is it? So something just got thrown in the way of this perfectly good flowing economy and it has been beset by obstacles. I mean, I I think we go back to our our dear friends uh, in in and I think Val Kilmer uh, asked the question best. And where is the question? Um, the It's got to be over here. Yeah. Would you classify that as a launch problem or a design problem? Yeah. I would, uh, I would qualify it as a design problem. Yeah. Um, in addition to domestic concerns, China has also faced increasingly restrictive trade measures. Yeah, again, not an obstacle, something they did to themselves uh, from the United States and uh, its partners as a part of an intensifying global competition over, over competition over cutting edge markets. I think it's directly their fucking theft of it and production lines. It's their theft of it. Not competition. We don't mind competing. Competing is good. Now Chinese ambassador to the uh, uh, United States, Xie Feng, uh, Feng uh, explains what these new quality productive forces constitute and why they're viewed as so critical to refueling the rise of China's economic powerhouse. Oh, let's hear it. The term new quality productive forces makes people laugh, has emerged in recent months in reference to China's efforts to accelerate economic growth. Can you explain the meaning of this term and the strategy behind it? If it has one, and if there is one, oh, xie xie celery. Um, yes, hui shuo zhong wen, shuo de hen hao. Um, so, uh, Ambassador Xie, in brief, because if I go at length, you'll realize I'm talking out of my asshole. It refers to innovation-led, reform-driven, advanced productive forces that will boost total factor productivity and promote high quality development. Cool story, bro. This includes making traditional industries higher end, smarter and greener. 
Cool. So far, shit from a memo. Um, in fact, China's electric vehicles, lithium-ion batteries, and photovoltaic products all thrive on transforming traditional sectors. All, all new technology transforms traditional sectors. I'm just saying, all of it. Like, every, that's, that's uh, I don't know how it thrives on it, but whatever. Again, this is, this is like, Business fucking talk. Yes. P.S. They also, uh, their uh, lithium batteries thrive on exploding in people's driveways. That's why the BYD cars are called burn your driveway. Fostering new industries such as biomanufacturing. Yeah, you're not making a lot of friends there, buddy. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I know what you mean and other people know what you mean. But uh, it's going to scare the living fuck out of the maggots. And they're not, this is not going to open up doors. After covid don't bring up biomanufacturing for a long time. Commercial space flight, also like, let, let me get this right. You're a developing nation with a space program, and now you are you have a commercial space program in the process? Good luck sending your military, or your, uh, or your, um, your millionaires up in rockets. The low altitude economy and life sciences. The low altitude economy. I think he means like blue collar shit. And life sciences, what they mean is social manipulation. Life sciences, that phrase alone should scare the fuck out of anybody when it comes from the CCP. Last year, the total output value of China's biomedicine, artificial intelligence, and nanotechnology applications exceeded $55 billion. Um, I got uh, A, to whom, and B, chicken shit money. Does anybody, anybody know... Uh, and I'm sure chat room, you, some of you guys might know, and it helps with these conversations we've had with uh, Rob Glenn. You know what the expected um, financial benefit from AI is supposed to be in the U.S. economy in the ne in, by, by 2030? Not, not in 30 years or not a decade from now. By 2030. Six years from now. What do you think that the, the financial... Um, yeah, fifteen trillion dollars. That's a conservative estimate. That's not even including the money saved by efficiency and all kinds of stuff like that. Fifty-six trillion worldwide. Worldwide, fifteen trillion in the U.S. economy alone. For who? For everyone. Like every business will be incorporating this into it. The, like cost, manufacturing, efficiency. Um, you know, 5Xing what you're able to accomplish at work, all that stuff. Everywhere. Waste not, want not, dot org. <laughs> yeah. And, and by the way, and the everybody's like, it's got to go all to the wealthy. Like, it can't go all to the wealthy. It doesn't work that way. There's no wealth to go anywhere if it doesn't get spread out relatively evenly. Um, or the guys that aren't protected, uh, the U.S. will change policy. Yep, I agree, as as he should. Why I voted for the guy. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, this is a. This is, yeah, here you go. This is this is a picture. This is this is a picture. They're supposed that's supposed to be Im impressive. Uh. It looks like a circuitry or something or, or a UPC symbol. It's actually parked cars. New electric cars for sale are seen parked at a distribution center of the Chang'an Automobile Company in uh, southwestern China uh, in Chongqing Municipality on March 24th. And there they shall stay. Yeah. It's a fucking waste. Um, uh, and, and by the way, they, they fake sell them. They, they, they make them and stack them and go, we're producing more than anybody else. They don't run. They don't last. And when, when Trump is talking about, they don't go very far and they're cheap and they're, you know, they're all going to be made in China. All the cheap cars that aren't, don't go very far are going to be made in China. He's right about that. The ones made in the United States though, or by American companies in other countries, 
um, or or European ones or whatever the fuck, um, they'll be made. You know, they they go almost three hundred miles already. Who wants a hundred percent tariff on autos? Well, this isn't. By the way, the the tariff in this situation is not about uh, cars. It's the fact that. You know, the concerns about TikTok being able to track people and steal their information through their phone. Well, uh, the concern is, is that Chinese electric cars can track you the same way. And that that's and that they could if they sold massively in the country, if China, you know, put a kill switch in them, that could make them all stop dead at some point. They could literally grind, uh, you know, traffic to a stop across the entire country, you know, with the flip of a switch. That's the concern. And it's a reasonable concern. It is absolutely the kind of thing you could make happen. And you could also blame it on hackers and leave it at that. Right? Yeah. You've seen 440 miles on a single charge, but who drives that much? Well, somebody who's driving across country. That's our, that, That's what most people talk about. They talk. They always, they always talk about electric cars at, at the same way they talk about gas cars, about trips they don't end up taking. Yeah. Why would you buy a Tesla? Um... Um, I'm not going to. Uh, originally, I was interested in it because, again, that company wouldn't even exist if it wasn't for uh, Barack Obama's um, rescue package for the audio in- auto industry in 2009. But uh, he's such an asshole now. Why would I buy one? Yeah. Used one, that's another thing. You know, you're not throwing anything that way. You could just uh, swap out the, the hood emblem and nobody will know. It'll be your own proprietary thing. Take it to a chop shop and go, hey, take off the Tesla things and put on my own little... My, put this on the hood. Um, yeah. What effects might this strategy have on performance indicators of the Chinese economy? Uh, none. N- none. I would like to say none. None. It's, it's not going to work. It will not work. It is not going to work. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. None of it. It's not, it's not, it's not working. It's not going to work. Hell, it's just because of that weirdo. Yeah. Um, so, uh, (laughs) I still, I still drive my Toyota and it hasn't worn out yet. Okay. Meanwhile, um, you gotta forget that. And I'll leave you with this because I gotta go because the show's going long and I don't want to talk too much about this. But Joe Biden is compromised that he's owned by China. Okay. 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 Joe Biden is owned by China. You have to remember, Joe Biden, they have control over him, which is why the Chinese get everything they want from Joe. Uh, Oh, shit. Well, maybe not. I mean, maybe maybe he's supporting China by not supporting China. Maybe the, maybe everything is maybe we live in the upside down. Maybe that's what's happening. I'm happening. I'm Maria Bartirama. Um, <laughs> your filters aren't working. I'm just doing that with my face. Um, yeah. Uh, this is uh, when Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen traveled to Beijing last summer. Her mission was to reestablish a dialogue between the world's largest economies and stabilize a relationship that appeared to have reached rock bottom. Also, largely, it's m- more to do with. Um, I, I got to tell you, like here, I don't want to give away the game, but in my opinion, we are, as all Western societies are finally fed up with the slave labor that China has used and the and the theft of intellectual property that the CCP does. That's it. Like COVID, you know, was the thing that kind of made it a bipartisan thing. But that's that. We're fucking done. But we have a lot of big companies that built shit over there, Right. Um, specifically, we have a lot of companies that build stuff over there and they can't get out quickly. And if they tried, or they just shut those things down. It would affect the, you know, it would, it would rough up our economy as we're responding, right? Um, as, as, as we're responding to COVID and we're rebuilding. And, uh, so they, you know, that we're tiptoeing out of the room. Uh, there's a crazy person in the room and the idea is that we're not going to make that person sane. So we're just going to see you later. No, no, no. I'm just, you know, I'm not leaving. We're basically all um, Paul Pelosi. And the Chinese economy is uh, is uh, the pape guy, the maggot who attacked him. He's not like, no, no, no. I'm just going in the bathroom to use the phone. You do you. No, I'm, I'm definitely not calling the cops. I'm just going to go. You, we're friends. We're fine. Everything's good. Yeah, no, no, no. Don't worry about it. I just got to... I got to pee, make a phone call. I'll be right back. I just, you don't want to, well, okay. I'm gonna, that's what it is. That's, that's what he's doing. Right. Um, so, and we're leaving. Everybody's leaving. But 
it's got to be done in a measured way or it will crash a lot of these companies. And China has known that for a long time. That's why the hooks were in so hard. You, can, you can't remove yourself without harming yourself. <laughs> I think there's a pretty good one, E1. It's a weird analogy, but I think it works. Um, the United States and China created formal economic working groups to keep the conversation going months later. Ms. Yellen met with her Chinese counterparts in San Francisco and Morocco. Um, and then the Treasury Secretary, uh, consumption of a dish made uh, with psychedelic magic mushrooms at a Yunnan style restaurant in Beijing sparked something of a culinary craze in China where Mrs. Yellen is popular for being an acclaimed economist. Um, right, because they wish they had somebody of her quality running their economy right now. But despite those signs of progress, thorny, yes, she did mushrooms in San Francisco with the Chinese, <laughs> whatever. But despite those signs of progress, thorny economic issues continue to divide China and the United States. What would those thorny, just thorny issues, they're just thorny, that's what it is. They're just thorny issues. That's all. Just thorny. You know, sometimes stuff happens. Obstacles appear in front of you. You know, hurricanes Sometimes you just, on a whim, saw off your own fucking leg. You know, equal obstacles. Both forces of nature, if you will. Um, yeah. Uh, we don't need to decouple our economies, Ms. Yellen said on Wednesday during a stop in Alaska on our way to China. We want to continue and we think we both benefit from trade and investment, but it needs to be on a level playing field. Okay, it will never be on a level playing field. First of all, the idea that there's a level playing field is is aspirational, even in the United States. I mean, we're fighting antitrust situations all the time, as we should. It's kind of why you need a a, a slight a, a a bigger than small government, as it were, because if you didn't, you know, if you if you have a if your government's so small, corporations could just run roughshod over it. Weird. Anyways, same thing is true of countries, and China has no interest, by the way, in being ideological or ethical partners with the West of the United States. Honestly, if they could get away with open slave labor, they would just fucking do it. The only thing keeping them from using it overtly is the fact that we don't want that in our world. They still do it under the radar. So you think they would stop if if they were just doing business internally? Fuck out of here. It'd be way worse. They don't have to, and that's one of the other concerns too, as we, you know, it's kind of like the Taliban taking over Afghanistan. There's an element of, if the rest of the world extracts itself from doing business with China, the standards of how the rest of the world does business get removed as well. That's fucking horrible. So anyways, I, I'm over. I'll see you guys later on today. And then uh, um, Phil will be with us tomorrow for the radio show. And I'll see you this afternoon. Take care of yourself and take care of somebody else. And thanks again to Rob Glenn for, uh, riding along on Friday I with us. I'm going to go, I'm going to go, let's see, maybe I'll, yeah, I'm going to go make a, an AI theme song for Rob when he comes on the show. It's just a piece of music. Something, yeah, something relentless, you know? Uh, I think that's, that, that'll work. Hmm. <laughs> Outside, it's packed. We had a wet vaccine. I like fighting number two. Captain's log. Mm -hmm.